Welcome to the second episode of my screencasts on Altisnips. Today I will show you how to work effectively with Altisnips and how to create your own snippets. Here you can see the list of features in the current version of Altisnips, which is 1.6. We will discuss most of the features in this episode, but we'll keep the most powerful one, namely Python interpolation, for the next. We are working on an HTML page today. Of course, Altisnips already ships with a load of snippets for HTML. You can get a list of them by pressing Ctrl Tab in Insert Mode. So here's the list of all the snippets. But snippets are usually something very personal. It is therefore very important to be able to define and test new snippets quickly. So let's insert a div tag here. Hello world div. I will likely write more than one tag today, so it would be useful to have a snippet for a tag. So to quickly define a snippet, I issue the vim command altisnips edit. And you can see that um, this opened a, a new file which is located in my default vim directory under the directory altisnips and it's the html.snippets file so those are my snippets for the html file type. To quickly define a snippet I just enter insert mode, write snip and press the tab key. This expands a snippet that is defined for snippet files and I can just fill in the tab stops now. So um, the tab trigger will be T in this case. The description, which is only used in the listing of the snippets, um, will be a simple HTML tag. The next tab stop are the options. I delete them for now, we will discuss them in a minute. Okay, and now between snippet and end snippet, I just enter what the snippet should be. So I just go over there, copy and paste this one, like so. Now I write the snippet file and Altisnip will uh, directly pick up the changes I made. So I can just go over there and test it. So I write T and press the tab key and this expands the snippet that we just wrote. Of course a static snippet like that is not very useful for HTML. So let's improve upon the situation a little bit. First undo this insertion and then we go over here and we will add a dollar one in the opening bracket and also in the closing bracket. The In the opening bracket that means this is the first tab stop and in the closing bracket that means this is a mirror of the first tab stop. So let's save the snippet file and let's see how the snippet behaves. So I write again T and press the tab key and you realize that the cursor is now in the opening brackets and I can now just type another tag name, for example small and you realize that in the closing bracket the small gets mirrored and this is exactly what we insert over there. But let's make that a little bit better. I want to add some default text to the first tab stop. So I go over there again to the snippet and now I change the $1 in the opening bracket to a default text like that. And this will now basically be the same. So instead of a tab stop we now call this a placeholder. And that is basically a tab stop with a default text. So I write the snippet file and go over there again and test again. So T and press tab. And now diff, the default text is inserted in, and I can just write, uh, just type to overwrite it. Let's quickly talk about options. The current snippet has a flaw. For example, if I change this hello world to tagalicious or something like that, and I now want to tab complete this word, and I press T and press tab, I expect that tagalicious is completed, but that doesn't happen. What happens is that Altisnips expands the current snippet again. That's not what I want. So I tell Altisnips with a snippet option that is called B, that this snippet should only be expanded at the beginning of a line. So let's save this again and then try again. So if I press T and press tab now, it will complete tag and tagalicious for me. And only if I am on a line on its own and I press T and press tab, then the snippet will be inserted. There are a lot of options for snippets. Luckily, Altisnips comes with a documentation. You can just write help Altisnips and this will open the help page and you can find uh, the documentation for all the features of Altisnips and of course also for all the sn uh, snippet options inside of here. 
Next topic is transformations. These are similar to mirrors, but instead of just copying the content of a tab stop over, they transform it via a search and replace operation. We will use a transformation to fix another issue with our snippet. If you for example want to define a tag with an attribute, like a div tag with an ID, the attribute will also get mirrored in the closing bracket. This is not what we want. And we can avoid that by replacing the mirror in our snippet via transformation. Okay, so let's go over here and make this a transformation. And the transformation will look like that. We want to match a word and then the rest of the snippet, uh, of the tab stop, of the first tab stop. And we will replace that with what we matched, so this will be the first word. And now if we test the snippet, if id is, oh I forgot to save once again, if id is my id and you can see that the attributes are no longer mirrored down here. I am satisfied with the tag snippet now, but I will need another snippet to quickly insert to-do reminders. The content of the snippet should contain my username and the current time. This gives us the chance to look at the last two features for today shell interpolation and win script interpolation. Let's define the snippet. So snip tab it should be triggered by to do and this is a to do reminder and it should only be expanded at the beginning of the line. It should look something like that so obviously it should be an HTML command and then to do so that it is easily grabbable and a description which is a tab stop and now here I want to have the current time. For this I use WimScript interpolation which has the syntax backticks exclamation mark and then v for WimScript and now I can write a, um, a vim language expression so for example strf time and model c and now I finished the snippet, so I finished the HTML command and saved this. And now let's try that out. To do, bam, and I can write something like uh, finish this. Okay. But I also want to have my username in, the, in there. So I go back here and now I do shell script interpolation, which is, which is just backticks, backticks, so everything between those two backticks will be interpreted by the shell and expanded and I can do something very simple like just echo user and if I try that out to do exclamation mark it will enter and in insert my username here and you can really go crazy with uh, shell script interpolation because you can write complete scripts here also for example a Perl script or something like that and the uh, output of the script will be inserted at this place. Today we looked at the fundamental features of AltiSnips. I've shown you how to quickly define snippets for the current file type and we've talked about the basic features of AltiSnips, namely tab stop and placeholders. We also mentioned snippet options. We further discussed mirrors, transformations and two of the three interpolation types AltiSnips can do, namely shell script interpolation and wind script interpolation. The next time we will take a look at AltiSnips most powerful feature, Python interpolation. You can find an accompanying blog post to this video on my blog. I put together some more examples of what can be done with the features we discussed today. See you next time!